Hello and welcome everyone. From this video, we'll be starting our practical sessions. So let's get started. We will be building seven different modules of microservices. These are listed here: Limit Service, Spring Cloud Config Server, Currency Exchange Service, Currency Conversion Service, Netflix Eureka Naming Server, Netflix Joule Gateway Server, and Jipkins Distributed Tracing Server. So we will be making all these seven different microservices and we will be assigning the port to each of the microservices so we have written the, all the ports in a separate place in a github so that it will be easier for us to maintain and this link i will be providing in the description you can take it from there we will also be adding endpoints associated with each of the microservices just below this one you can get all the endpoints from there or you can create your own endpoints i will just be keeping it here so that it will be easier for me to maintain in future now let's move on to the next step as i told in the beginning we'll be developing everything from the scratch so i will not even skip one step so let's start it from the beginning first of all you will be needing a spring tool suit that is a ide for building the spring boot applications or microservices applications if you are having eclipse or netbeans you can very well use that now this is spring tool suit 4 that i'm using i'm also keeping the theme to black it will not be having much brightness i will increase the font size as well so let's uh, go on to create our first application first we will be creating limit service that is our first microservice and it's nothing but a spring boot application so let's go on and create our first microservice click on new spring starter project and you need to have a working internet connection give the name of the project now the artifact will be automatically coming here the group name i will keep it com dot techno tab my channel name then i will be keeping the package name in this format limits now click on next what all things we'll be needing here we'll need a web so this is spring web we'll take dev tools for now let's take these two services only we will create the project click on next and click on finish so when you click on finish it will show the progress in the progress bar if you are downloading this version of spring for the first time then it will take some time to download so the application is fully downloaded and you can see a boot and a dev tools extension this dev tools extension we have added because whenever we are making any changes in our code we don't have to manually go and restart the server every time it will pick up the changes and it will restart the server so this is the folder structure it has got a src main java folder that is having our application and the resources folder test folder the jre libraries maven dependencies we have got here and the pom file let's see the pom file once i will increase the font a bit in the pom file we have got a parent tag that is having all the information about our spring boot versions spring boot starter parent then the version is 2.2.2 the name of the project that we created group id artifact id and this description you can change that later the java version is 1.8 then the dependency that we added is a spring web starter and the dev tools and this dependency spring boot starter test is automatically added and that's all about pom xml now we have got the project let's make sure that our project is running fine so the spring boot application comes with the embedded tomcat server so you don't have to externally download any uh, tomcat server you just need to go to run as and start it as a spring boot application you can see in the log here tomcat started on port 8080 that is the default port and our application is started you can see the red button here and when you go to this boot dashboard you can also see it here as well see this up arrow mark that means that it is up and on the port it is showing here so our application is up now let's move on to next step now let's look at something very important managing the configurations there will be multiple microservices talking with each other and there will also be different environments related to each of these microservices like a development environment or qa or a stage environment or production environment 
So it becomes a very challenging task to maintain the configuration of all these environments at one place. And that too, when we have a different amount of load at different time, Let's say that currency calculation service is not having load at the current point of time, but at the same time, the currency exchange service is having more amount of load. You can see this as during the festival times, Amazon is having more load on its server. So, so those kind of configurations, it becomes very challenging to maintain. So in that case, Spring Cloud Config Server comes into picture. So this is Spring Cloud Config Server will be a common microservice that will be talking with each of our microservice. This is Spring Cloud Config Server will be talking to our Git repository where we will be storing all our environment related configurations at one common place. This will save our most of the time and confusion. And this is the best approach that we use in our real life projects. Now here we have already created the limit service. So our ultimate goal for now is to connect it to the Spring Cloud Config Server and get the values from the Git repository. Let's go ahead and do that. So this is our Spring Boot application. Now let's go to application.properties and give it a name to our application. We have given this name limits service. Now you can give the port number here as per your choice. But what we have done, we have defined that limit service should be on the port 8080. So I will not change the default port, which is 8080 here. Port number will be same. Now let's go ahead and create a controller class where we'll be storing our limits. Let's name it as limits configuration controller. Click on finish and we should have kept this in a separate folder. No worries, we will create one more package and we will name it controller and we will move this controller to this package. So this is a controller, say rest controller and we will be creating a method. So what method will create? We are going to create a maximum and the minimum limit. So let's define a public method first public limits configuration return limits obviously we don't have the limit configuration as of now let's go ahead and create the class limit configuration in the package bean let's give two limits the maximum and the minimum private int maximum and minimum and let's create a setters and getters for this class go to source and click on generate setters getters select all and generate let's define a private constructor as well and in the controller class let's give this method some endpoint get mapping and the endpoint that we are going to expose is limits so this method will return something let's add a return statement and change this return to return the limit configuration to values actually new limit configuration with two values that is maximum and minimum let's hard code these values first thousand is maximum and 99 is minimum this limit configuration will be taking these two values the maximum and the minimum in the limit configuration we have not generated the construct let's go and generate the parameterized constructors go to source and generate constructor using field and select maximum minimum and generate now let's go to limit service save this and our application is automatically started at port 8080 now go to browser google chrome or any browser and hit localhost fallen 8080 and this endpoint hit enter and you will be getting something like this the maximum value and the minimum value so we have hard coded the value and we have got the value on the browser so we have hard coded the values here now let's move to the next step we will not hard code the values here we will set the values in our application dot properties so go to application dot properties and here you define your values how do you define your values you have to give your application name dot minimum or maximum equals and the value i'm keeping let's say minimum is 10 and the maximum value is 1000 let's save this and we have kept the values here but our application is not aware like from where to pick the values so, so this is the configuration that we have done so this configuration we have to enable in our program where we can enable this configuration 
we can enable this from our limits configuration so just give this at the red component and configuration properties and in this configuration properties you have to mention your application name here our application name that we have given here is limits service so the same name we will be using here now you can use any name in application properties you can use any name but the same name you have to refer it here in your limits configuration let's save this now in our controller class we have to pass this maximum and minimum value so how we can do that we have the setters and getters here we just have to get those two values so first of all you have to call this class limits configuration in your controller class how we can do that we can just call it as private limits configuration and give it a name and just auto wire it now you can use your limits here limits dot get maximum and limits dot get minimum save your application the changes are picked up and the server gets restarted automatically now let's go to our browser and try to refresh it so now you can see the minimum maximum value is 1000 and the minimum value is 10 that is coming from our application dot properties minimum 10 maximum 1000